Hello and welcome to the course. My name is Greg Vanderford. I've been playing chess very seriously for most of my life and studying it very hard for my entire adult life. I studied it with masters and grandmasters in Vietnam where I live and where um, chess is very, very popular. There are a lot of grandmasters here. And I've got a few courses on openings on the internet and I consider myself to be an opening expert at this point, I've studied them very, very intensely and, and used all different kinds of openings in my repertoire. And openings are super important, especially if you play online and you play a lot of Blitz. Blitz can be a game as long as 15 minutes per side. 10 or 15 minutes is still considered Blitz. And even going up to like 30 or 40 minutes per side, which means like an hour long or greater than an hour long game, is considered rapid. So traditional chess is, is a much longer format, and most people just don't have time to play a lot of long chess games. And so the openings have become even more important than ever before, because if you know the openings really well, you can blitz out your opening moves and be sure that you're making strong grandmaster moves that are considered to be the very best book moves that have been analyzed by computers and grandmasters for many, many years, especially in the case of this course, which is all about the Sicilian defense. This is by far the most popular opening, and yet a lot of people don't really understand it. There are lots of different lines and variations in this opening that you can go into depending on what your opponent plays. And so it's really important for you not just to know the opening moves, but to know each different variation and the key ideas behind the variation. And that way you can adapt. If you're just like memorizing opening moves, but you don't really know what you're supposed to be fighting for or what strengths that you're supposed to be getting in that position, then you're not going to be able to adapt when your opponent inevitably makes a surprise move or a move that's different than what you expected from the book. And this happens a lot at the lower levels. If people don't know those openings very well, you're going to be like, okay, I'm learning this new opening, I'm going to use it. And then your opponent varies from the opening after like one or two moves. If you know what you're trying to achieve with that opening in the first place, well, then it should be even easier to achieve it if your opponent isn't playing the strongest book moves back at you. Usually, we'll be going for some control of a critical square or giving yourself certain attributes of the opening, like having an open file or strong central pawn or something like that. So when we understand those things, we can play off of that strength into the middle game. And in blitz games especially, when you know the openings really well, you save time and to make the best possible moves, it gives you a big advantage on the clock and in the position. So it's really powerful in blitz and especially in lightning games, if you like to play like one or two minute games, which are just really, really fast, right? Is knowing the openings might be the key skill in doing well in those types of games. So you're not really thinking that much during the first maybe even 10 or 15 moves if you're playing at a at a pretty high level, you know, a strong player, they will also know the opening well. So you can bust out a bunch of really strong moves, get a big advantage, and then not use up all your time on the clock. So the Sicilian defense is very, very rich. It's been played and favored by Bobby Fischer and Gary Kasparov and many players throughout time because it's fun to play. There's lots of chances for both sides. It's considered to be a sharp opening, so there's a lot of tactics involved, and it's very, very complex. And yet, you don't need to be a really strong chess player to understand its goals and how to play it. So it's, it's popular and fun at all levels of the game, and um, especially with four or five key variations to it, um, it's really important to know them. So we're going to go through the classic variation, which I'll just show you the moves for right now, and then we're going to go through all the most popular variations that you need to know, some of which your opponent will not be very familiar with, which is really good because then you will surprise them and they will be at a disadvantage. Because of course, always our goal in the opening is to get some sort of advantage, put your opponent on the back foot, give them a disadvantage. So obviously, if you're taking this course, you know that the move that starts a Sicilian defense for black is 1c5. Put your opponent on c5 instead of the typical e5, and you are seeking to be aggressive. You're counterattacking in the center as opposed to just mimicking white's first move and having symmetry, which is considered a strong move, but it's more passive, whereas this is much more active. You're seeking active play as black in the Sicilian defense. But not only do you need to know how to play the Sicilian defense as black, 
you also need to know the variation of the play as white when your opponent chooses to respond to e4 with c5. So we're going to be studying both white and black and how both should be playing and what you should both be trying to achieve in all of the important variations of the Sicilian defense opening. So after c5, if we're going to go into the open Sicilian, later on in the course we're also going to study the closed Sicilian, which is a bit more popular at the higher levels of the game with grandmasters and stuff. It's more strategic, it's more closed position, and it's not quite as popular, although it can still be really fun to play. It can be a surprise weapon if you know the closed Sicilian really well for white, because black may not be prepared for the position that you're going to get. But the open Sicilian typically starts out like this. White will play knight to f3, black will play d6, and what makes the position an open Sicilian is that this move here, when white plays d4, and these pawns are traded off, it opens the board. If this move is not played, like instead if it's played to c3, or the knight comes out instead, and these pawns aren't traded off, it will not be leading to the open Sicilian position. So we trade, and then black plays knight to f6. And the final move of the classic line of the opening of the Sicilian defense before it breaks off into other variations is white will defend the pawn on e4 with knight to c3. So this is the beginning sequence of the Sicilian defense. And after this, we can go into any number of variations. If black chooses right here to play g6, that means we're going to go into the dragon variation. It's my favorite to play, it's really fun, but at the very highest levels of the game, these days, the top players in the world, they almost always play the Najdor or a similar line to that. It's been analyzed more deeply and it's considered to be more solid for black. But if you're not a grandmaster with a 25 or 2600 ELO rating, the dragon is a very viable weapon. It's really fun to play. You can get a lot of wins with black. It scores really well. It's just that it's considered to have like a few minor weaknesses to it if you're playing against the strongest players in the world because they're finding like the absolute best moves all the time. And um, some of the top players have not scored very well with the dragon in, in the higher levels of tournaments and stuff. But since most of us aren't, obviously, if you're taking this course, you're not a grandmaster, um, it doesn't really matter. So if you play g6, that goes into the dragon. And we're going to, of course, learn about this opening. It's going to be the first one we cover because it's the most popular one to play. It's one of the most important ones to know for club players, which is what we are. We're just like club amateur players. Maybe we play in tournaments, play online. We're, we have various levels of, of skill. And so um, this is an opening that you're going to see a lot. And so we're going to be on Kedemar Bishop, we're going to castle, and we're going to achieve certain things with the dragon opening and that line. Okay? But if we don't play that, if we choose instead to go e6, this is considered to be a very, very solid opening. It's called the Sheveningen variation. And what you're basically doing is you're setting yourself up defensively for white's oncoming attack. You're basically going to almost let them attack. If they play properly, they're going to play f4 here, or they're going to set up something that we call the English attack. I'm going to show you later in the course. And they're going to try to attack your king. But when you have your pawns here like this, you can set up your situation in such a way that you can kind of nullify their pawn score. And then once their attack fades, in theory, then you will have a counterattack on the queen side. And that's the purpose of the ship engine. And it's just very solid, and it gives you a good position no matter what. A lot of these defensive solid openings also lead to really good end games for black, which means that it might favor you to trade off a lot of pieces because when you go into the end game, you've got a really good pawn structure and you should have an advantage in converting once you get to an end game. So we'll, we'll talk more about that later in the course. And then we're going to look at the very popular amongst GMs, Najdor, the Najdor variation. So when you play a six, this is the popular line. And we'll see why when we study this in depth later on in the course. Putting this pawn here, it stops not one, not two, but three pieces of white from coming down here and making a check or getting the knights to make threats. And so this stops that, and then it leads to another rather aggressive um, opening position, opening posture, where black has a lot of good chances to attack on the queen side while also having a really solid setup. And so this leads into the, the opening that Gary Kasparov and Bobby Fischer both loved to play and scored very, very well with. So that move marks the beginning of the Najdor variation, and we will see how that one continues later 
as well. We're going to look at a whole bunch of different variations in each one of these openings. Because you need to know lots of variations. You can't just even know the opening moves. You need to know if your opponent plays this or that, what do you do then? And then finally, we're going to look at the closed Sicilian. So as I mentioned, if somebody doesn't make this d4 pawn move and trade right here, what type of an opening are we going to have? Normally, the closed Sicilian will actually start out with white playing the second move, knight to c3 instead, because they're aware of the fact that these open Sicilians have a lot of chances for black and a lot of dynamism in the position for black. That's why we choose to play the Sicilian defense. So when they play the closed position, they're trying to take all that away from us and go into a more tame and strategic type of position. But that's fine. If we know this opening as well, we play knight to c6 instead, and usually both sides will pm keto the bishop, and you're going to be playing um, a different type of setup, and most of the time black will not be all that familiar with the closed Sicilian. So they may not know exactly what to do, and that gives you an advantage. So normally we might see both sides pm keto, and basically what white's doing to closed position is they're giving themselves a a position that looks like the king's Indian attack, which is where you fianca to your bishop and you put your knight over here on e2 instead of f3, because later on we're going to prepare for this f4 pawn push. When the position is closed, it's more safe to move the king's pawn forward or any pawn in front of the king forward. And so I'm going to show you guys how later on in this position. We're going to be able to play this move at the appropriate time, and we're going to attack the king. So even though this is the so-called closed Sicilian, if white knows how to play properly, it's, white gets a really good attack anyway, even though black's trying to avoid that aggressive pressure from white and keep the position closed. We can see that we can line up our pieces, and at some point, depending on what moves are played in at one point in the game, we will be able to maybe break open uh, the king position and attack the king on this side. So we're going to go into a whole bunch of different lines of this opening as well. So the Sicilian defense is really fun. There's a lot to know. It's never ending. And the more you learn how to play different variations, the more you're going to enjoy playing in blitz games and the better you're going to score. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy the course. And the next lesson, we're going to go straight into the dragon variation.